Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, uh, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello. Well, uh, got this, um, <laughs> got this really big video coming. Uh, fairly, fairly big. And um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, um, Sitting here with you and taking notes and comparing scripture with scripture, um, it's not as easy as so many of you think it is. I mean, it really isn't. Uh, but anyway, I, I got this really, we, excuse me, I'm not in charge here, okay? Got this really big video coming, really big, and please, brethren, uh, pray for your servant about that. Um, I'll tell you what it's going to be about. I don't know if it's going to be this week because a uh, video this big requires diligence, um, discipline. Okay, In the scripture, Solomon talks about, uh, well, let's go there. Please get, this is going to be something a little short. Um, just want to share some stuff with you. Go to Ecclesiastes. I believe it's now Isaiah 46, right? Uh, Ecclesiastes 12. Go to Ecclesiastes 12. Oh, let's uh, read verses 11 and 12. Let No, let's read 11 on to verse 14 in Ecclesiastes 12. The words of the wise, wise, those who fear the Lord. S supposed to. There is a wisdom out there that is of the world which is earthly, sensual, devilish, okay, and they deceive you through uh, vain deceit and philosophy, uh, Colossians 2, verse 8. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd, and further by these my son be admonished of making many books. There is no end. <laughs> There is, that's true. That's true. Well, it says making many books, okay? Uh, there was a time when I had three or four of those. See that? Three or four of those. Uh, when we came from Madison Street to over here, uh, got rid of quite a few of the books uh, that I used to have. Quite a few of them. Quite a few. But anyway, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Okay. Especially when you're in the Word of God, the authorized version. The Spirit, you know, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. A Bible is not spiritual. I, no, 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 I take that back. Yes, a Bible is spiritual. It is. That spirit of Antichrist. What does it mean to be anti? To be against and replace. So yeah, a Bible is a, yeah, yeah, represents that spirit of Antichrist. But when you're studying the Word of God, especially when you got the, a big video, it's going to be about love, by the way. The video that I'm talking about, this big one, it's, but I tell you, y'all think, Love is something, and what scripture we will see whenever this comes uh, is totally different than what the world tells you it is. Okay, but anyway. Anyway, when you're studying the scripture, okay, I don't care who you are. Um, myself and my wife, we spend lots of time in scripture. But see, the, the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And comparing spiritual things, the Lord that lives in us, with spiritual things, the scriptures. And it's contrary to the flesh, and it, it's tiresome. But it's a good kind of tire, okay? Anyway, um, one of the things that I will do, and I, 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 this, this is a fault, so I'm going to confess this to you, but it's something that is a thing of interest unto me. We all can get distracted very easily here on YouTube, okay? 
It's really easy. You see, especially if you watch these stupid shorts, uh, you can really get, you know, zip, 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 or swipe, swipe, up or down, or whatever. Uh, you know, you watch one, the next thing you know, you've watched 20 of them, and there went your day, okay? And, you know, and, uh, oh, by the way, brother, I will watch that video you sent the link for. I will watch that. I will. Uh, but anyway, um, one of the things that I will watch uh, on YouTube is these things about ghosts and stuff like that, okay? That is a topic of interest to me. Okay, now there will be a couple videos in the <coughs> in the description box uh, where we talk about that. Okay, ghosts, devils, uh, poltergeist activity, devil possession are all real things that really happens. Okay, I myself have encountered okay poltergeist activity when I worked at the tavern on the square. The old courthouse, okay? That place has devils in it, okay? And here's the thing that you people, and we've talked about this in many videos, Ghosts Among Us and the one haunted house looking place down in Shelbina on uh, Mill Street, okay? Um, ghosts, devils, poltergeists, those are real things. That really happens, okay? When you're like in a house and a door opens by itself or some crazy thing happens where you're there and you can't it's like there's no fishing strings or some dude hiding behind a couch or whatever nonsense like that but when something actually happens okay you gotta remember people our father the Lord Jesus Christ does not work in that way okay he does not. You encounter something like a poltergeist, a ghost, or an apparition, or something. Those things are real. That really happens. You're encountering devils. Okay? Our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, God is a spirit, does not operate like that. Yes, he could. But see, also, if you see devil manifestation like that, uh, with, you know, poltergeist doors slamming, and there ain't nobody there, and no fishing lure or line or whatever nonsense, you actually see something. You, you're, you're, you're coming in contact with a devil, a devil. Okay? Those, those things are real. There are, there is such thing as a devil-possessed individual. I've met them. I've encountered them. My mother was devil-possessed before she died. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. That's a very sensitive topic for me. Obviously. Anyway, I will watch some of these ghost videos that these channels come up well um and there's this one uh bizarre bub is the channel now see you gotta remember okay people listen a lot of these ghost videos that you will see here on youtube the shorts and stuff like that they're fake okay they're fake i mean they're i mean Remember, fishing line on a camera in a dark setting with the night vision thing. Very difficult to see a, a crystal clear, thin fishing line, okay? A lot of that stuff is fake, okay? A dude hiding behind a couch opening a closet door and slamming it and stuff that you can't... A lot of the stuff is fake, okay? But every once in a while, you will come across a video or something or see a clip where it's like, okay, that might be legitimate, all right? Um, and, when, of course, when I go to these videos, I, I mean, I rarely comment, but uh, when I see one that's just absolutely, it's like, dude, this is so stupid. This is so fake. What are you guys doing, okay? But then again, there have been ones where I've, you know, watched the video and I've left a comment with the Ghosts Among Us video. It's like, these things are, these are devils. These are devils. You're dealing with devils with these things. 
okay? And you also got to remember, too, the like the uh, Bizarre Bub channel that I mentioned, not the only one. <coughs> There's like the channels like the Scary Five, that dude Chills is his name, he's got a really weird voice, would be a nice narrator for a book, oh, not scripture, of course, God forbid, but um, that do, you know, these kind of things. They use psychological manipulation tactics and they use binaural sound waves and megahertz. For example, the scary part of the video will be playing and you'll hear this tone, this music in the background, meant to purposely uh, make the heart rate go quicker, okay? So they're adding to it, okay? Like I commented on the one dude's uh, video uh, that I was watching, I, I noticed that, you know, it's like, Dude, you're using psychological manipulation tactics. You're using binaural certain frequencies to induce the heart rate to go faster to add to the fear, okay? If you got evidence of devil possession and devil activity, the that alone in and of itself should be enough. Great way to witness to people, too, by the way, if if that's... Uh, Someone's texting me. It's probably, probably uh, uh, the beloved brother Alexander. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, I mean, uh, when you come across these things, uh, if the Lord leads you, it's a, it's a really good chance to drop a verse of Scripture, but then again, you know, well, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay. It's like you meet a Christian who says, I don't believe in ghosts. Really? You don't believe in ghosts, huh? You know, um, the Lord is that spirit. There's the Holy Ghost. You know, like it says in John 4, God is a spirit. Okay? If God is a spirit, that means what? That there is possibly another spirit out there, that spirit of Antichrist. Okay? All right? That always, that always baffles me. Uh, with you Christians, I don't believe in ghosts. Heard of the Holy Ghost, right? Okay, if there's Holy Ghost, what, what, what do you think about? What, what, what do you think that are in these houses, right? Stupid. <laughs> well, look, if you don't believe in ghosts, <laughs> fine, go, go roll up another one. But the reality are, is that these things exist, and they're nothing to trifle with. Okay. They're, they're nothing to trifle with. You're not going to call Bill Murray or Ernie Hudson to come with a, a converted ambulance with laser guns to try to... No, 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 okay? And also, too, uh, when you see some of these, these idiots, and I'm being polite, okay? These idiots <laughs> will, like, do seances. To try to talk to the devils. Satan casting out Satan. Brilliant! Brilliant! <laughs> yeah, hold a seance to communicate with a devil spirit in your house that's throwing, like, plates around. Brilliant, genius! There you go! There you go! Brilliant! Brilliant! Yeah, that's that. Bravo! Bravo! Yeah, up the dosage there, buddy. Roll you up another one. Okay, I commented that on the one again, and the dude whose channel was removed to comment, and it blocked me too. <laughs> he did, he did, he blocked me because I, I, I spotted off at that because it was one of those guys who, you know, like the ghost hunter dudes who, you know, make a living going to investigate this stuff. And the idiots held a seance, covered in tattoos, all lost people, say, well, what about Jesus? And it's like... <laughs> you people are joke. Okay, you guys are idiots. You're using a seance, <laughs> a devilish practice, to, <laughs> you know, like fighting fire with fire. It, it's uh, uh, under the dictionary under redundant. It says to see redundant. Okay, crazy, crazy. Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. <clears throat> Like I said, I, I, that's a fault of mine, brethren. I, I will. I will check out ghost videos. Uh, they're real. The Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ. God is a spirit. 
I, you know, uh, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Let, let me show you that verse, okay? See, you have a Bible. <laughs> you have a Bible like the NIV, ESV, non-King James Version. <laughs> Or even better, the New World Translation. <laughs> hey, Dade, sometimes you got to lay off the stuff there, bud. But anyway, John 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, capital S. Capital S spirit is very important because it denotes the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same it's the capital S. That's God himself. And remember, God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. Yes, even you. Okay? God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, see, you, you take out that A there. God is spirit. How are you going to distinguish which is which? Oh, that's easy. You go to a Jesuit priest in your uh, non-denominational uh, church building. They ain't priests, yeah, but they were trained by Jesuits. They got the piece of paper on the wall, right? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Or are, are the, these poor idiots, and I'm using that politely, um, who they've seen it, they've seen, say, they've seen things, or they saw it, you know, the, the Pentecostal Charismatics are notorious for this. You know, like I used to I, I used to know a nitwit crazy guy from down under who claimed that he saw the Lord. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You guys see something. But you ain't seeing the Lord Jesus Christ God the Father. You're seeing the devil. Maybe even the devil himself. And I, and I doubt that because... The devil is not omniscient, omnipresent, or omnipotent. He can't be in two places at the same time like the Lord, you know. Okay, I, I'm saved. Okay? Lord Jesus Christ dwells within me, God the Father. Okay? Brother from uh, out northeast, uh, from Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah, love you, brother. That's as far as I go. I ain't naming your name. But, you know, he's, he's you know, the Father lives in him. Okay, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, the father dwells in him. Uh, Brother Jeff Jones, brother from Ohio, from Georgia, and from Oregon, you know. The father lives within his body, his people, okay. Uh, Satan can't do that, okay. So if you're seeing the devil personally, oh boy. Oh boy. But anyway, anyway, you take out that A. And that opened one single letter. One single letter. You take out that A. God is spirit. Well, how are we supposed to distinguish? Like I said, you go to your church building. You go to your Jesuit priest. Huh? They'll tell you. Yeah, right. Using the Bible. And remember, Rome gave you the Bible. God gave you the scriptures. Big difference. Okay? All right? So, God is a spirit. A spirit. That strongly suggests to you what? That there is another, at least, spirit out there. That spirit of Antichrist. And to be anti is to be against and to replace. Okay? You know, antiperspirant, an example. Replace your natural stink with um, synthetic aluminum siding stink. Okay. But Deuteronomy chapter 18. We want verses 9 on to verse 14. Okay. If you got a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Yiberian. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Re read along with me because I make mistakes and I skip a groove sometimes. This goes quicker than my brain sometimes and vice versa. So follow me along, okay? All right. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. 
There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, link for you in the description box, <clears throat> or a wizard, or a necromancer, someone that converses with the dead. Okay? For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. So you, you, you ghost hunter people, uh, when you're, you're using a seance to talk to, to talk to devils. I'm not saying that. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. See, a seance is a form of necromancy. <laughs> Guys with tattoos cursing, bleep, 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 and, and they have the audacity to mention Jesus. Well, which Jesus are you talking about, buddy? It's like, you, you, you're brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, using Satan to cast out Satan. You know, no wonder the devil laughs at so many of you, okay? And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Now see, context perfect there is what? Not doing any of those things, okay? You get that garbage out, okay, and you're starting to get good, okay? Just putting it in that way. I mean, we can go off forever on that kind of topic. But, okay, in context there, okay, uh, you don't, don't, don't do any of this nonsense. Okay? For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearkened unto observers of times, and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. You know, somebody, want, you know, you want to believe in a lie that you can do all that nonsense? God's like, okay, you want that? Okay, you don't want me? You want that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go go have it. Have fun. Okay? You want the Lord? He, he's going to stay. Don't, don't mess with that stuff. You know why? Because number one, it's real. It's real. Okay? Okay? Ghosts exist. People, if there's a Holy Ghost, and there is, the Lord Jesus Christ, Okay, and God is a spirit. What, 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 what is it with you? What? Well, what, what, I don't, I mean, I don't, agree. I, I seriously, it's like, okay, you, you call yourself a Christian. It's like, okay, you believe in the spirit of the Lord, right? Okay, God is a spirit. But no, you're reading the Bible, it says God is spirit. So, you know, with that kind of thing, any one of these, see, that's how some of these dumb Christians can get to thinking in a, in like a poltergeist activity. It's like, Oh, it's so-and-so. The Lord's allowing him to get... No. No. Where do you get that kind of idea from? You take out one single little letter from a verse. God is spirit. And you open up the door to all kinds of nonsense. Okay? God is a spirit. And that tells you that there's another one out there at least. And it's that spirit of Antichrist that is against and replaces. Okay? Okay, are you with me? Um, backtrack to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 on to verse 32. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. I'm in the wrong place. Excuse me. <laughs> if you turn, you're like, Brad! <laughs> Brad! <laughs> Deuteronomy 12, 29 out of verse 32. That's why I tell you to read along with me. When the Lord thy God shall cut off... Uh, now we're in the right place. Deuteronomy 12, 29 out of 32. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. 
after that day be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their lowercase g gods. Saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. The American Indian, the true Americans, if any, are Shemitic. Okay? They're Shemites. Yes, they are. They have the dream catcher. That's where this thing from the Navajo, the uh, skinwalker, you ever heard about this? Skinwalkers? Even that stupid nitwit jerk Joe Rogan. Now, whether or not he was being serious, I don't know. The, the, the steroids got to his head, which he openly admits he does. I'll give him that at least, okay? At least he's up front with his stuff, okay? But he even like if you, you know, he believes in skinwalkers, apparently. Skinwalkers, which is a shamanic American Indian uh, witch, you know, a male, which they call warlock and stuff like that who can, like, shapeshift. This is the same thing with the lizard people and, uh, oh, whatever, whatever they are. There are so many crazy things out there. But, uh, see, devil possession is real. We're going to look at some of this today. But <laughs> the skinwalker stuff, talking about little Fido Poochie with, like, looking like, and it's like so much of that stuff is fake anyway. Okay, but, see, devil possession is real. Okay? A saved individual cannot be possessed with the devil. There's no way. There's no way. Okay? Uh, you're saved. You came to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. Called upon his name, and he saved you. God the Father dwells within you. There ain't no way a devil's going to be dwelling in you when you got the Father dwelling in you. That, that, that ain't going to happen. But a devil can... Okay? A devil can't oppress you as a saint. Possess you? No. <laughs> what fellowship hath light with darkness? You know, seriously? No, no. If you're a saint, there's no way a devil can be in you. A devil can, like I said, whisper in your ear, can oppress you, but possess you? No, that, no. Okay? Verse 31, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What, so, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto nor diminish from it. The dream catcher thing with the American Indians and also with a lot of the Hamitic, you know, voodoo, Okay, voodoo, all right, where rock and roll gets its origin, voodoo, okay, and they did contemporary Christian music, <laughs> okay, like a brother said to me the other day, it's like, you know, you're, you're better off listening to a Slipknot than listening to a CCM, at least uh, that kind of music is up front about it, <laughs> okay, don't listen to those things. Okay. All right. And Deuteronomy 7 now, just two verses. Deuteronomy 7. What's the problem? Number one, here in America, America is not a godly nation. America is a Christian nation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, Christians are associated with Catholicism. Catholics aren't saints. Wait, hey, you know, you got a question about a saint, and I'll, I'll make sure that the link is right in this one. Uh, you want to know about what a saint is? Okay, myself and Brother Alexander Hartley, we did a video, led by the Lord, talking about what a saint is. You're a saved individual, you're a saint. The link for that will be in the description box, okay? But, um, yeah, America is a Christian nation. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, you're saved, guess what? Um, you're not a Christian. You can argue all day you, if you want about that. that. That's whatever. Okay? Remember, Catholics are Christians. And when you speak to a Hebraic Jew, uh, who normally don't want to be referred to as a Christian, praise the Lord, 
they like that. I'm a Messianic Jew. It's like, okay, there you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know why? Because most of the times, the Hebraic Jews will associate Christian with the Crusaders and the crosses on their tunics. That's good for them. They got that one right, okay? But, see, what has happened is America, because I'm an American, so I'm going to talk about my, my, my nation, um, has allowed so many things under justification, just as if I. You get idiots coming around telling you, it's like, just believe and receive, so that, like, you, can, you call yourself a Christian and you mess with the Ouija board. Call yourself a Christian and you're uh, inviting devils into your house. How? Deuteronomy 7, 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Luke 16, verse 15. Okay? Now, gold and silver on your celebrities that you see on the TV and the, even the YouTube celebrities that, you know, they have this uh, picture-perfect life and meant subliminally to make you dejected with the things that you have, right? Okay? Verse 26. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. Why? Lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor. Abhor is extreme hate. Abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. How many of you people are allowing, you know, watching things on television? We have a big, you know, a flat screen in there. We use that for watching documentaries, listening to Brother Alexander, listening to hymns. <clears throat> and stuff like that, having the scriptures being read in the background. Okay, that's what we use that for, okay? But, you know, watching Hollywood movies and stuff like that, you're inviting, you're giving doorways for devils to enter into your house, okay? And remember, you know, I'm going to be 50 years of age this year. And like it says in Psalm 101, Psalm 101, I might have that wrong, I usually get that wrong. No, Psalm 101, <clears throat> verses 1 on to verse 3. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. A perfect heart is a heart that belongs unto the Lord. <laughs> Neighbors up there doing something. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I want to be 50 years of age this year. I can remember movies that I saw one time when I was a teenager. I can remember clearly the music and lyrics of ACDC. Fear Factory. I can remember these things. It cleaves to you. Why? Because it's all fleshly. Okay? Now... Let's begin with Mark chapter 5, okay? Mark chapter 5. Saints, this video is not intended for you. You know this. They don't, okay? Mark chapter 5, verse 1 on verse 14. Talking about devil possession, okay? Notice I'm using the term devil, okay? Bibles put in the term demon. And they call it transliterating or whatnot. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, <clears throat> is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. This, this is it. You don't go to the Hebrew or the Greek. You go to the authorized version. Hey, you saying that you say? Well, you saying they gotta learn English? You shut up. You're saying they gotta learn Koine Greek and scriptural Hebrew. You go take a long walk off of short pier, pal. Okay, you shut up. Okay, talking to guys like that. Oh, and surprise, surprise. The golfing evangelist comes out that he was not a safe person in the get. No kidding! Even that bloke from Blackpool. And bloke, I, I'm sarcastically, not a bloke. But even he can figure out <laughs> this guy's a. Yeah. Anyway. 
Mark chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 14. And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit is a devil's spirit. Okay? Okay? Who had his dwelling among the tombs? No man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Unexplained strength. My mother was a frail, under 100 pound woman uh, around the time of her death. Uh, she would have fits of unbelievable strength and stuff like that. Okay, that kind of thing could be a sign of devil possession. I say could be because when adrenaline gets going into the body and goes through the muscles and stuff like that in a fight or flight situation, things could happen that way. Yes, they can. But a lot of time here in this context, that kind of unexplained strength, like with the, mag Ooh, the magicians thing, the magicians, oh yeah, the magicians, which is on the backup channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Estepario Seberano guy, the drummer, um, who, yeah, he made a deal, he, he mocks about it, made a deal with the devil so he could play the drums really good. Anyway, sign of devil possession, okay? And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Again, my mother would often, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, and go back to normal, woo -hoo. <laughs> signs of devil possession. Okay, I, I, I don't like using that as an example, but I was able to see it, so I have that example to tell to you people. It's like, this, look, this stuff is real. Okay? But when he saw Jesus, pay attention to this, afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. The devil went and worshipped Jesus. Because every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Well, we're going to read Philippians 2 here in a little bit. So, I'm not going to give ahead of ourselves, okay? But yeah. And cried with a loud voice. Said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, My name, and he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the country, and told it in the city, excuse me, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. Double possession. Double possession. Luke chapter 22. We're going to go back to Mark, but Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Satan himself can possess and indwell in someone. Absolutely. That man of sin, the son of perdition, which is erroneously, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. The Antichrist does not appear in Scripture. It doesn't. Find it. Find it. Put it in the comment section. The Antichrist. Verbatim. The. T-H-E. Antichrist. Find it. It's not in Scripture. Okay? The Antichrist is not in Scripture. But see, remember, you got to remember, Satan is not omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He is not. 
he can't be in Rome, okay, and in Florida, okay, he can't do that. He has a intricate network of devils, okay, he sure does. www666 World Wide Web, okay, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. But, you know, the devil does have this very intricate thing where he, you know, communication and stuff like that, okay? <laughs> Go, you, you wrap your head around that one for a little while, okay? But Satan cannot be in two places at the same time. You read the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. He can't do it, okay? Satan is not God. He's the little G-God of this world, but he is not God, the God, okay? He isn't, all right? But Luke 22 this is one on verse three. Now at the feast of unleavened bread, now the, excuse me, feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Verse three. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the 12. And go to John chapter 13. Go to John chapter 13, which is 18 on the 27th. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. And the Lord says, have I not chosen uh, you 12 and one of you is a devil? Speaking about Judas Iscariot. People will ask, why did Jesus knowingly select the devil? They, have you run into that one? And that's where the Catholic will go to the Gospel of Judas, where they imply that Judas was actually Jesus' very best friend, better than even anyone. No, I personally believe the reason why the Lord allowed that and knew that, number one, to show you that not everyone who's going to be around you who claims to really love you is of you. That's my personal thing. That's why, because he's like Judas. Betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? Judas, the friend of Jesus, right? Right? That's why I believe the Lord allowed that. For instruction and in righteousness. It's like, hey, Judas, I'm sure, uh, you know, he loved money. You know, you even atheists know that one. Uh, Judas loved money. He loved himself. And if you would have asked Judas Iscariot, I'm sure he would have said that he loved the Lord Jesus Christ more than anything. But yet he was the one who betrayed him. I personally believe the Lord purposely uh, picked uh, Judas Iscariot for that example unto us. That it's like, look, there are people out there who's going to claim to be of you, but they ain't of us. Okay? I personally believe that's why that was like that. That's my own personal, that's my own personal opinion, okay? Just saying, let's continue. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. And you can make the tie-in in the Genesis chapter 3. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, that's chest, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, John the Apostle. Shimon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast, see, see bosom breast, it finds itself, okay, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, S-O-P, Son of perdition. Uh, even in John 17, the Lord said about none have been lost except 
the son of let me let me let me let me find that for you. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I have to pause this. So ah, there it is, verse twelve, uh, John seventeen twelve. While I was while I was with them in the world, I kept them in Thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Sa, get it? That man of sin, the son of perdition. Totally different topic. We're not going to get off on that, but let's continue. Back to John, chapter 13. Verse 26. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest. Do quickly. So Satan himself can inhabit a person. A person is a spiritual body. Can Satan himself inhabit a saint? But no. The devil can't do that. No. Whisper in the ear of a saint, oppress a saint by many means, but possess no. No. Not gonna happen. Go back to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. This is 14 on to verse 27. Mark Mark chapter 9, verses 14 on to verse 27. Where are you going, Brad? Mark chapter 9, 14 on to 27. 9, Brad! <laughs> All right. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit. Dumb means not being able to talk. And whatsoever he and wheresoever he taketh him, pay attention to this, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 18 is clearly describing a seizure. Okay, a seizure. Have you ever seen someone? It's horrifying. It's horrifying. Have you ever seen someone have a grand mall seizure where the foam comes out of their mouth, like stuff like that? Even the sound, I've seen that. Okay, I've seen the girl swallow her own tongue before because you you know the eyes roll back in the head and stuff like that I've seen that okay scripture in this context equates a seizure with devil possession but here's the thing and I, I've talked with brethren and they go ahead just because for example there's one guy that bashed his head against the windshield in a car wreck and now he has seizures okay you can do trauma to your brain. Whether you're taking a drug, whether you have like a hammer fall on your head, okay, you can have trauma-induced damage to your brain that could cause a seizure, okay? You could have something, something you can eat a poison, like high fructose corn syrup, okay, not every occurrence of a seizure necessarily is a sign of devil possession. However, however, Scripture is plain that seizure here is equated with devil possession. That cannot be disputed. That can't be. It's right there in front of us. But, like I said, not every seizure means a devil-possessed person. We could go round about about that all day and all night, okay? Scripture is plain, and that's not that's not even a thing. It's right there. Okay, that's wallowing, foaming, now a pineth away, gnashing his teeth, you know, swallowing their tongue, foam, eyes in the back. Yes, 
That's describing the seizure. Not every seizure means devil possession. Like I said, went through that bashed his head up in the, the, the windshield. Now he has seizures. Okay? Okay? You can have trauma done to the brain. You could have, a, you know, like some kind of medical thing within you or something like that. That could cause a seizure. Okay? That doesn't always mean devil possession. But scripture is clear. Scripture is clear. You would not be wrong if you encounter someone having a seizure to first think devil possession. You would not because it's, it's right here. It's right here. But again, it doesn't mean that it's always the case. Okay? Just saying. All right? Because the scripture right there, that's a seizure, dude. That's a seizure. <laughs> okay? That's a seizure. He answereth him and saith, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's read 18 again. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. This is a seizure. And scripturally, a seizure is equated with devil possession. Period. Period. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Again, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long, of, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child. Proverbs 22, verse 16. Or is it 6? I think it might be 6. Proverbs 22, is it verse 6? Yes, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. And what did we read in Deuteronomy chapter 7? You know what I'm getting at now? 25 and 26 in Deuteronomy chapter 7? How many of you parents out there to pacify your kid... You stick a tablet or a cell phone in front of them. Say, hey, go watch a TV. Give them a video game thing to play. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed, be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Why, why are a lot of these kids messed up? There are many reasons, but one of the reasons is, is because the parents, you know, you hand them a tablet, you hand them this, you get, you, you send them to the Jesuits to get trained in their little schools, you say, go watch TV, blah, 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 well, what do you expect? What do you expect? Hey, you got your kid in a public school or a private Christian school? Shame on you. Get him out of there. Well, I can't. Who says so? Law so, yeah? You know, the scriptures say that father and mother ought to be the one training the children, raising them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Yeah? Who says so? World or the Lord? You roll, you roll around with that one for a little while. Verse 22, back in Mark. And, often and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and, ha and help us. Jesus said, said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. Christianity has destroyed that. Tried to. They can't destroy that. But the reality is the impossible is possible with God. Okay? That, that's a fact. Straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. 
When Jesus saw that the people came ran, running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Dumb can't speak, deaf couldn't hear. But yet, and the spirit cried, and rent him, and rent him sore, and came out of him. Have you ever stopped to think about that? The spirit that was in this kid was deaf, but yet, sure heard the Lord, didn't he? You ever think about that? It was like, huh. Okay, the spirit couldn't speak, dumb. And it was deaf, couldn't hear. And yet, it cried out and came out. Because the Lord said so. And that's something, huh? Anyway, let's continue. And he was as one dead, and so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Okay? All right? Then we see another thing of devil possession, and the tie-in with the seizure. Okay? Again, again, just because somebody has a seizure doesn't automatically mean that they are devil possessed. But... Without shadow of a doubt, seizure activity is likened onto and linked to devil possession. You would not be erring if when you come across someone, you would not err if you first in were like, uh-oh, dude's having a seizure. Oh, you would not be in error to think that. Okay, you wouldn't. Because it's right there. You wouldn't. Okay? Just say it. Alright? Now, go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 33 on to verse 36. Okay? And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. And cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Thou believest in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> one God comprises the spirit, soul, and body. Hey, one plus one plus one equals three. Okay? The Trinity is satanic, the Trinity is a joke. It's an offense to God. God is not three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. God is not a three person, one God. That's insanity. Okay? Just, just saying. But see, devils know the real deal. Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? The sons of uh, Skeva. Skeva. Worry about that later. The pronunciation. Worry about that later. But the sons of Skeva. Okay? Sons of Skeva. The devil that was in the naked guy. It's like a, a Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? And those were the exorcists who took it upon themselves to call upon the name of Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Hold on. Hold on. Let's read this. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. They were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Well, yeah, yeah. And the fame of, verse 37, And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Okay. Uh, and also while we're in Luke, let's go to uh, chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 20. We're going to find that about the sons of Sceva, okay, or Sceva. Hold on. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 on to 20. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. How art, thou, uh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Not morning star. 
Okay, you got a Bible, that's Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. You got a Bible, it uh, doesn't have Lucifer in there. Okay, usually it doesn't. A Bible tells you that Jesus was, was fallen from heaven. God forbid. Okay? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Question! Had the Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again third day according to the scriptures yet? No. No. The law was still binding and the Lord Jesus Christ was offering the actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jews. Okay? And the Jews require a sign. I'm saying that for you wicked Pentecostals out there who come to this and want to justify something today that isn't for today in this dispensation. Okay? That's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? All right? Because how many of these Pentecostals with the deliverance ministry? I command you in the name of Jesus. What? Jesus. Shut up. Shut up. Okay? All right? Uh, now, about that, uh, where is that? That is Acts. Nah, hold on. I got to pause it. Find it. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 verses 13 on to oh, 16. Okay? See, a lot of people will call on, use the name of Jesus. But, you know, and, and we're going to look at uh, Philippians chapter 2 after this. Okay, but um, you got to remember something. These guys didn't actually believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Check this out. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, they took it upon themselves saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Look at that. Don't look, don't look at me. Look at the verse. They took it upon themselves to cast out evil spirits. And taking upon themselves the name of the Lord Jesus. But look at how they applied it. We adjure thee by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. They were not associated themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were trying to like take something, you know, who Paul preacheth. It's like you ghost hunter dudes who <laughs> have the brilliant idea to, like, brilliant, brilliant. You know, I, and like I said, I was uh, in the one video that I got blocked on, I, I, was, I was pretty harsh in that comment to that dude. It's like, you are, an, and I call him that. It's like, you're an idiot, okay? Uh, Satan casting out Satan. You're, you know, I didn't say you're stupid, I don't think, but I, I did. I called him an idiot. <laughs> I did. Like, dude, you're an idiot, okay? You're using a seance to talk with devils, and then you're going to talk about, get go. It's like, and there were seven sons of one Skiva. 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 Not Skiva. Skiva. A Jew. I got it right, brother. And chief of the priests, which did so. <laughs> see, see, and, you, and you guys with these and calling out a seance and using a Ouija board. To Don't talk to devils. Okay? In, in the, the book, uh, the thing about the testimony of Alberto Rivera, uh, his testimony through Chick Publications, Chick tracks, you know, the uh, sixth uh, thing that they did. Uh, there was one called The Force where he talks about, you know, how he, you know, did exorcism, but see, it was theater. The, the, the devil spirit went along to make it look like the Catholic priest exercised, okay? It was all a shoe. If Satan cast out Satan, how's his kingdom going to stand? Okay? You're using a seance to try to 
do something about a devil in your house that's throwing pots and pans around? Brilliant! Genius! Bravo! There you go! Roll up another one and bang your head against the wall. That's stupid! Crazy! Okay? No, no. But Okay, look at this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? This, this, this devil was saying, what are you guys doing? Okay, get, okay you, you're working for my father, the devil. What, what are you guys doing? Huh? Get, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> okay? All right? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Okay? All right? Again, you, 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 you ghost hunter guys who talk about, let's hold a sand. It's like, okay, the, there's pots and pans, doors are slamming, we're seeing things, you're experiencing devils, let's have a seance. Let's get out the, the Ouija board. Philippians chapter 2. Oh, and there was also the, uh, the, the one uh, gal in uh, Acts 16. Uh, uh, let's go to that. Let's go to that. Acts 16. Acts 16. Verses 14 on to verse 18. No, uh, excuse me. Verses 16 on to verse 18. And, it can't, and now I have experienced this personally. My, me and my wife have experienced this personally. There's some crazy, there was, there was some crazy devil-possessed woman around here who would, when she saw us, she would yell and scream. One day I was up at the Jewel witnessing on this poor homeless guy. She's over here like, oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, possessed with devils, okay? I didn't do what Paul did, but okay, I've experienced this. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. And we looked and dude around me, uh, divination is not a good thing. God, that's an abomination. And anyone who does that is an abomination unto the Lord. Okay? Psychic, you know, up on the Woodstock Square, there's a psychic palm reader. Okay? And, and carrot, uh, carrot. <laughs> tarot cards. What? No. No. Okay? No. Okay, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain through soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Was that the truth? Yeah. But who was doing it? A devil, but as a spirit of divination, that's not a bad thing. Dude, we looked at Deuteronomy. Okay, that has not changed. I remember uh, hearing about that one lesbian, uh, Lutheran, German Catholic preacher, okay, saying that the, uh, the gift of divination that Paul did here was a gift from God. The little G God of this world, but not the God of Scripture, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what we looked at in Deuteronomy has not been undone. Okay, hence it's binding. Don't mess with this stuff. Okay? Don't mess with it. Okay? And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Okay? I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Okay, in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you hear these Pentecostal guys, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and it's all about them. Paul, you know, he was grieved. He's like, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And in two places, Zechariah chapter 3, Zechariah chapter 3, was that it? Oh, I, I, let's finish the verse, sorry. Uh, and he came out of her. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 
And this, the, uh, verse 18 in Acts 16, And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Incidentally, angels are not females. You heard of a succubus, right? Succubus, a female uh, devil. Angels are not female. You see that that disgusting touched by an angel <coughs> uh, with the you know God loves you nonsense, tripe, dung. Um, angels are not females. Different topic. We won't get off on that. Okay. But in the book of Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, uh, verses 1 and 2, And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? The Lord rebuke you. The Lord. Not me, not me, not me, not me. And also in Jude, Jude, and remember Jude does not have chapters. Jude is just its own little thing here. Jude 9 on to 11. Yet Michael the archangel when contending with the body uh, when, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of, thing, of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Kind of like the sons of uh, Sceva. The way you deal with devils, number one is you don't deal with them. You don't. It's, you know, you, if you come in contact with devils, okay? <laughs> number one, um, number one, do an inventory of your place. You got a dream catcher in the corner of your room, right? Okay? You got, you, you got the stuff on the television, pictures, what you're bringing into your house, your CD collection is filled with what, whatever. You, have you opened doors for devils to come in? That's the first thing you need to do. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do. Okay? You would be surprised, dear person, spirits on body, if you balanced your home off of what this says, the authorized version, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. That's something of divination. That's something of charmer. That's something that's witchcrafty. Okay? All right? Okay? Uh, you would be amazed. Number one. Number two. Number two. Don't go to Rome. Don't be stupid. Okay? Exorcists, okay, exorcists. Call this. Don't you don't let you don't want Satan to, 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 to coming in. Satan casting out Satan. It doesn't work. It's a shoe if something happens like that. But okay. Also, don't do something dumb like a seance. Don't do a Ouija board. Those things are those are poor. That's a doorway to a, a let a devil. Do, and those things actually can do that. The devils will use that. Okay? 
Brother Mars had talked about it, you know, he'd give a testimony if he would about how his well, one of his family messed around with the Ouija board. And here you go. Okay, I can tell you stories about people who told me, you know, mess with the Ouija board and stuff like that. That, that, you don't do that kind of stuff, genius. Okay? All right? But see, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is God the Father. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then, see, here's another thing that the devils do. Whose name? Whose name? Yehoshua. Yehoshawashi, as if he, he's a motorcycle or something. Whose name? Which one? Whose name? Which one? For there is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must, must be saved. That's Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. Christ means anointed one. Okay? In the name of Jesus Christ, there is power. Amen! Absolutely! Amen, amen! Okay, but here, here's the thing that you guys got to consider. Number one, you <laughs> lost guy going in, messing around with devils with your stupid seances and your, your Ouija boards and uh, getting like uh, rosemary bleeds. Okay, try, and okay, you're, you're trying to use Satan to cast out Satan. Okay. The authorized version. The authorized version. Scripture. Okay. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. But see, a lost person, we, we saw the example of this with the sons of Sceva. Okay? We saw the, the advent, we, we saw this. They were not saved people. They were trying to combat Satan and his stuff with the name of Jesus, but... They were not. They were like, okay, we don't believe in this, but we're going to try to use the name of the Lord Jesus to make us look good, so it can benefit us. It's like in the name of Jesus, who Paul preacheth. See, they were not associated. Okay, that's probably why. If any of you are saying, and then again, too, you know, a lost person who doesn't even know who the real Jesus is, most of the time they're going to explain. You know, it's like, well, who's Jesus? They're going to explain to you the Jesus of Rome. And the Jesus of Rome isn't God. The Jesus of Rome is one of three gods that they tell you, yeah, that make one. Okay, so listen, people. All you enthusiasts and stuff like that. First of all, here's what you got to remember. Devils, ghosts, polter, poltergeists are real. A lot, I would say, 90% of the stuff that you see, I'll say that, 90%. 90% of the stuff that you see on YouTube is just a bunch of hooey. It's a damn it, man. But there are certain clips that you can see that, you know, and even then it's, it's, it's in this format, you know, camera kind of stuff even then uh, but you know there are some that are just so blatantly you know the, the one that i saw today that kind of sparked this the dude uh, laying on the bed or on the couch and then the door slams it's like dude you don't see what's behind that couch how do you know that this isn't a stage thing the one guy who's freaking out and he sees a uh something in the 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 window or something and a lot of the times a lot of the times when you see these videos, the narrator are the ones that have to either slow the tape down and point it out to you, and, and pay attention to this, they have that music in the background. 
that real creepy music okay that is purpose that's on purpose they're you know they're using the binaural you know which means both ears they're using certain frequencies to tug at your emotions to get your heart rate up okay that's manipulation okay like I said I, I've called the guys on that it's like dude you don't gotta do that okay you got evidence let the evidence speak for itself you don't have to do that dude okay but like I said most of the stuff you're gonna see is fake when you come to something that is actual okay that's a different story all right people God Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, does not operate in that kind of sphere. Could he? Yes. Does he? No. Because we are to walk by faith, not by sight. You got pots and pans flying around on wires. You got operate. That that's visual. Okay. It's also audible. Okay. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. But see, those are visual stimuli. Okay. God doesn't operate in that sphere in that kind of thing devils do devils do okay so just just saying uh, if you're one of these guys who watch this you need to really you know why you wouldn't ghost hunter guys and hey genius say you know at least if you're gonna do this stuff at least don't be stupid and then try to hold a seance or get a Ouija board out. What's wrong with y'all? Okay? All right? And it's like, well, why don't we get a, a, a saved... A, a saved person is not going to go with you to do something like that. Because a saved person ought to know better. Okay? I mean, if we encounter in our home something like that, that's a little different. That's when you're just like, okay... We got to we do an inventory here. Is there something in here like with Achan? Okay, who brought in the Babylonian uh, garment and the wedge of silver? Okay, and uh, Israel was cursed because of that. We did about that in Joshua 7, I believe that is. Okay, all right. Check your your abode. Make sure you don't got make sure you don't got an open window or door for a devil to come in. All right. All right, that, that's where you start, okay? So it's going to be it for this little video. Uh, I needed a break because, uh, like I said, I got a, oof, got a big video coming. I doubt it's going to be this week, but I just wanted to tell you, please pray for your servant for that. Thank you for watching this if you do. There will be links for you in the description box for you guys to consider this stuff, okay? All right? Uh, you, you, you people, you lost people, you guys out there, you're dealing with devils. You're dealing with devils. <laughs> Watch out, okay? <laughs> See ya.